So the first tip for Final Cut Pro Magnetic Timeline Mastery is using the Position Tool. The Position Tool is located here, and if you click on it or press the letter P, you can turn on the Position Tool. And a lot of people talk online about how the Position Tool is sort of a way to turn off the magnetic timeline, and that's correct in a sense, but it comes with some caveats. You really want to be careful using the Position Tool because you can easily overwrite clips. It's sort of just honestly throws out all the rules of where you can and can't place a clip and it says hey wherever you want to place this thing go ahead and do it we're going to overwrite clips so we want to really be careful when using the position tool but it is nice that in a pinch if you really just want to move a clip out of your primary storyline you can do that one thing to keep in mind when using the position tool is if you have a clip with several other clips connected to it like this one has a zoom in effect and a sound effect if you use the position tool those clips are still going to go with it so you want to really be watchful of what you're taking along with the clip you're trying to move but the position tool does come in handy from time to time for those of you who want to move a clip freely and you're not concerned about doing anything destructive to your timeline the position tool is a really good one to know. All right, so the next tip is using what's called a gap clip. A gap clip is sort of just an empty, nothing gray clip in your timeline. So the shortcut for gap clips is option W, and that'll insert a gap clip that is three seconds long. And so if you wanted to add a transition, you can select this, hit Command T, and it'll add in a transition that starts from black and goes into your video clip. And these get gap clips can be moved around just like a normal clip. They're again, just sort of an empty placeholder that you can use for whatever you need to use it for. I really like to use these if I need to, let's say, fade from black into an image so I can drag across dissolve over. And then we have this black screen going into the start of your video. They're a handy tool when you need them and a great tool for working with the magnetic timeline instead of against it. Now this next tip is one that when I tell people that they can do this, they're really shocked at how they did not know about it. This is a great way of working with the magnetic timeline because when you normally delete a clip, again, the magnetic timeline being magnetic, it's gonna compress. So if we delete that clip, everything shifts down. Well, sometimes when you're working with a magnetic timeline, whether it's because you have sound effects or different audio things underneath your primary storyline, sometimes you wanna delete a clip without the magnetic timeline compressing. So if we select the clip and hit Shift Delete, you'll see the clip is deleted, but it's replaced with a gap clip. And the timing of your edit is preserved. Now, if you wanna swap out to a different B-roll shot, or you're just saying to yourself, I'm gonna work on this part later, these are situations where you'd use the shift delete keyboard shortcut. Now, another important feature in Final Cut Pro that exists as a result of the magnetic timeline is something called clip connections. In order for the magnetic timeline to function properly and as designed, clips that are above and below the primary storyline have to be attached to the clips on the primary storyline using clip connections. When you zoom in on your video, you can see a little connection point here between the audio sound effect and this basic title. You can see here in purple, the clip connection is attached to this clip in the primary storyline. And you can see here in green, because I've assigned the role of effects to this sound effect, it's attached in green. Now these clip connections can be changed. What gets people frustrated is they go to move a clip like this and all these other clips go with it and they don't want them to they want to be able to manage these clip connections and and put those connection points in different places so to be able to do that let's say we want this effect to be connected somewhere else we can click on it and put our cursor where we want the new clip connection point to be if we hit command option click it'll change the clip connection just like you saw here same thing goes with these titles since this title spans two clips we can change where this clip is connected by clicking on the clip hovering our cursor where we want the clip connection to be, hitting command option click, and you'll see that clip connection changed as well. I'll go ahead and undo that and the last one and do it again. Again, we can click here, hit command option click, and we can click here and hit command option click. So now when you go to move this clip, it's moving without taking everything else with it. These clips are staying connected to this clip because that's where the new connection points are. So you definitely wanna have a strong understanding of how to manage your clip connections. If you're moving clips around and it's frustrating you that other clips are moving with it, this is a great tool for managing or changing those clip connections so that you can have more control over how you edit your videos using the magnetic timeline. Another important tool for working with the magnetic timeline is understanding how you can lift clips 
out of the primary storyline or drop clips that are above the primary storyline down into the primary storyline. So here's an example here where we have a clip here and we wanna lift it out of the primary storyline. If we hit command option up arrow, we can simply lift it up out of the primary storyline and replace it with a gap clip so that our edit doesn't compress. This again is a great way for being able to sort of move things around in your timeline without having the negative impact of the magnetic timeline moving or compressing things along with it. Now let's say you have this clip above your primary storyline and you wanna drop it back down. Just hit command option down arrow and it'll drop it back down. This often comes in handy when you're working with B-roll and A-roll versus A-roll only. And there are a number of different situations where knowing these keyboard shortcuts are ideal. But if you keep that one handy while you're working with the magnetic timeline the next time a situation comes up where you want to lift something from the primary storyline or drop it down you'll know that keyboard shortcut so you can quickly and easily do it now one of the most common things I see that is frustrating to people who are working with the magnetic timeline are people who are editing their content to music so maybe they're editing b-roll and a roll they're working on a music video whatever it is they're trying to edit to the beat or the sound of the music and the magnetic timeline can be a little bit frustrating when making changes changes to your video makes your audio from your score change its position and put things out of sync from where you had them. So there's a couple of things that you can do to work with the magnetic timeline to make it easier to edit your video to music without having your music go out of sync whenever you change your video clips. I'm going to go ahead and grab a sound file here and append it to my storyline. And you can see here that like when we make an edit here at the front of our A-roll, that this clip goes into a gray area here. And if we have some of these clips chopped up, if we wanna move this clip over here, you can see it messes up the audio and that can be really frustrating. So a quick fix for this is to actually put your audio into a compound clip. So I'm gonna hit option G to make um, a score compound clip and I'm gonna put that into audio. Then I'm gonna double click on the compound clip to go inside of it. And I'm gonna use the tip that I told you before of adding a gap clip. We're gonna add a little three second gap clip and I'm actually gonna change it to 10 seconds just to make it a little bit easier to see. So with that gap clip inside the compound clip, you can see our actual score doesn't start for 10 seconds into our edit. So what I'm gonna do next is add a gap clip at the beginning of the primary storyline by hitting option W. Then I'm gonna select it, hit control D and change the duration to 10 seconds. And then I'm going to take my audio and bump it all the way back over so that I have this blank area where there's nothing. Now you can see that this clip is connected at the beginning of this clip. So now when I move this clip around, it doesn't do anything to the audio. The audio stays in place. Now you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but I don't want 10 seconds of nothingness at the beginning of my video. And that's where I say, well, at the end, when you're all done editing, you can, you can blade your clip here and then select these and then just hit delete and now your video starts the way that you want it to. But until then, this is a nice workaround for being able to keep your audio in sync while being able to edit your video clips above your audio without putting your audio out of sync. Now, an even better way to do this is to actually put your audio clip into the primary storyline. That way, this was your anchor. This was your foundation. This was never gonna go out of sync. It was gonna stay that way the whole time. And then with your video above it, you can chop it all up and then move stuff around no problem without your audio going out of sync. And this is actually where my next tip comes in and that's secondary storylines. Now a secondary storyline, if you're not familiar with it, could be something that's frustrated you in the past when you've tried to use transitions between your clips. I'm gonna hit Command G to turn this into a secondary storyline and it's showing here this gray sort of container around our B-roll clips. What this does is it gives the clips that are above your primary storyline magnetic timeline properties. So without it, you can't move a clip in between these two clips. They just kind of move around each other. With these clips in a secondary storyline though, you can start doing magnetic timeline things like take this clip and move it over here and those other clips shift down. I like to edit this way when I'm working above the primary storyline because for me, the magnetic timeline is my favorite feature in Final Cut Pro. So now that you have your audio as the anchor or foundation of your edit, you can move these clips around no problem and your audio is never gonna go out of sync. And you can really go back and forth between having your clips above your primary storyline in secondary storylines or all by themselves. Obviously, if you make an edit here and shift things down and this cut point had been aligned with this beat of the music, 
you're going to have to make some adjustments to fix that. You know, nothing is going to stay perfectly in sync, especially when you're trimming clips that have been cut to the music. There's always going to be a little bit of extra work to try to keep everything the way that you want it to be. But to me, this is the best route for making sure that for those of you who are editing specifically to music, music video editors particularly, think about putting the music in the primary storyline and then editing above it and using secondary storylines where needed to be able to have magnetic timeline-like properties for your video and b-roll clips that are above your primary storyline. Now the most frustrating thing about secondary storylines for most of you is that they're created automatically when you're trying to add a transition between two clips. So if I click over here and try to add a cross dissolve, you'll see that the clips are highlighted in white and there's this little plus symbol that goes here. When I release it, it automatically puts everything in a secondary storyline and you'll see a very small transition here in the middle. Some people who don't understand that Final Cut is creating a secondary storyline get frustrated because they don't know why their footage has to be in this gray container. And it's because of transitions. You can't add transitions between two clips without having them in the primary storyline or in a secondary storyline. So once you understand secondary storylines and why they're made when you're working with transitions above the primary storyline, you'll be less frustrated by those secondary storylines being created automatically. Just remember, secondary storylines are grouping clips together so that they have magnetic magnetic timeline-like properties, just like clips in the primary storyline do. Now sure, there are instances where you don't want clips in a secondary storyline, but again, you need to work with secondary storylines and without them to have an understanding of which tool, secondary storylines or no secondary storylines, is best for that situation. Now another tool that Final Cut has is something called audio lanes. This is a tool that really works well with people who have switched over from traditional track-based NLEs like DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, or even Avid Media Composer. When the sound aspect of an edit is getting a bit unruly because you have sound effects, and those sound effects have different categories like atmosphere, risers, hits, and you have audio, in the form of dialogue and you have audio in the form of music or score, it's nice to be able to take all those layers of audio and quickly put them into different lanes, which is Apple's term essentially for tracks. And I'll link an article that goes more in depth about audio lanes in the description below. But to access audio lanes, you can do it one of two ways. You can go over to the timeline index, click on roles, and then click show audio lanes. And you'll see that Final Cut has separated your audio into dialogue, sound effects, and score. And this is a great way for being able to understand quickly and easily where all your sound effects are and group them together. You can shrink certain audio lanes by clicking on these radio buttons here. You can turn off certain audio lanes as far as hearing them in playback over here with these checkboxes. And one of the really nice features is you can click and drag these to move them up and down between the lanes. Now this wouldn't be possible without the magnetic timeline. We often think of the magnetic timeline as something that compresses and expands as we move clips around. It's also responsible for the ease with which we can organize our different sound components. Now this audio lanes feature is for more advanced editors. A lot of you that are YouTube creators don't have a lot going on on the audio side, and some of you do. You have complex sound effects, you have score and complex dialogue edits. And it's really nice to take those timelines that are getting a bit unruly and organize them with audio lanes. The other way that you can access show audio lanes is by going up to the view menu and then choosing show audio lanes and you'll see them enabled there. All right, now I've saved the best tip for last and this is the tip that usually blows Final Cut Pro editors away and they wish they had known it months, years ago so they could take away those last little bits of frustration they experience on occasion with the magnetic timeline. So the most important key when working with the magnetic timeline instead of against it is on your keyboard and it is the Grav key. On US QWERTY keyboards, it is the first key and only key to the left of the number one. For those of you who are not using QWERTY keyboards, you can find the keyboard shortcut for this modifier by going to Help, and then Keyboard Shortcuts, and then we'll click Keyboard Shortcuts in Final Cut Pro, and then you'll hit Command F to search this document, and then type in Override Connections. 
Here it shows the Grav Accent key as the key that you can use to do this. For those of you who are not using US QWERTY keyboards, you'll see the key that you need to use to do these next tips. Now in a previous video that I made about the magnetic timeline, I kept referring to this key as the tilde key, and I was incorrect in doing that. If you press and hold the tilde key, you can click on this clip and move it over here and you don't have to worry about this clip coming with it. So what does the Grav key do to help you with the magnetic timeline? First, we're gonna take a look at moving clips using the Grav key modifier. Normally when you move a clip like this that has all these clips above it connected, it's gonna take those clips with it. When you press and hold the Grav key, you'll see this orange symbol next to your cursor, and now when you click and drag your clips, it's only going to move the clip that you have selected. All of the clips that were connected to it are going to stay in place because this modifier key overrides the clip connections. Mind blowing, right? If you only knew that months or years ago, knowing this keyboard modifier is crucial to falling in love with the magnetic timeline like I have. Now, when you wanna use the trim tool to slip or slide the edit, normally when you use the trim tool and you slip or slide an edit, you can see that these connected clips move with it. And that can be very frustrating because you just wanna slip or slide this edit a few frames. That's where the Grav key comes in. If you press and hold the Grav key, you'll see our orange icon that shows that we have the Grav key enabled mm -hmm. and then you can slip or slide the edit left or right and those clips stay in place. Again, it's overriding those connections and saying these connected clips are going to stay in place while you make your edit. This Grav key modifier again is crucial to being able to work with the magnetic timeline instead of against it and these are two situations where it comes in particularly handy i use this modifier key all the time in my editing and it allows me to stay frustration free with the magnetic timeline so those are nine ways to fall in love with the magnetic timeline in final cut pro that's all i've got for this one till the next one i'll see you all soon